The following program deals with mature subject matter and is intended for adult audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Youth, cars, and weapons. It's a deadly and heartbreaking mix. Imperiling the lives of two young women crushed between vans. And a teen hockey player slips into a coma. His car T-boned at highway speeds. The worst news any mother could get. And knife-wielding, quick-tempered teens put 17-year-old Andrew's life on the line, all for a few beers. They did this for beer? Yeah. No, you just worry about your kids. Violent crime in youth may be on the rise, but nearly 50% of all youth traumas come from car crashes, the result of bad judgments made in split seconds. There's a 1,000 traumas a year. 80% um, of them are blunt trauma, which means car crashes and falls um, and pedestrians hit by cars. It, it's sad when these kids come in with severe injuries that you know could have been prevented. Two young women who have fallen into that 80% category are rushed by EMS to Sunnybrook's Regional Trauma Center in Toronto. There's another one coming in. But well, she was the driver of the van. There's two vans there on scene. They were in the median. She was down face down on the ground. She just wrapped in towels just to make sure the bleeding was stopped. Get some uh, the other yeah. Yeah. I know, honey. I know. We're going to fix that. Co-workers in event planning, Brenda and Rhiannon's van spun out after hitting a patch of black ice. Then a fateful decision may now change their lives forever. Thinking they were safe, they got out of their van, only to be hit by another van, spinning out on the same patch of ice. Crushed between the two vans, Brenda's leg is now nearly severed. You know, it was a massive... Uh, injury to her leg. Muscle is ripped off the bone. The, the, the leg is mangled, almost amputated, and, and the chances of fixing that are, are pretty, pretty low in this case. How's it going, guys? Let's get the airway yeah. Trauma team leader and trauma program chief Dr. Fred Brenneman arrives just as Rhiannon is rushed in. Yeah. She was ejected, uh, unknown. Uh, found laying under the van. She uh, does have a complete amputation of her left lower leg. Anybody have another parent for me? Compound fracture of her right knee, right mid shaft, tip fib, and right ankle. Um, she is alert to person, but not place or time. No obvious head trauma. This is her leg. You know, there's always a consideration um, can we put it back on or not? And I have to say that in trauma, it's quite rare to be in that scenario because uh, it's usually, the amputated extremity uh, is usually very badly damaged. Hey, what's your first name? It's Rhiannon. Rhiannon, how old are you? 20? before I was shocked into thinking straight in one room. Brenda lies unconscious, her right leg barely intact, as the team struggles to stabilize blood loss that could be catastrophic. She's like pouring out there. Pouring out where? Gotta put the tourniquet just above the thigh. So when someone comes in with an uh, extremity amputation, the first concern is bleeding because, you know, there's a usually large vessel that supplies the extremity, in this case the leg, and uh, if it's not clotted off, you can have some significant bleeding, so our first concern is always bleeding. Can I get some blood? She also was sicker um, because of her other injuries. Uh, she had uh, a bit of a head injury. The combination of massive blood loss and brain injury is one of the worst scenarios, signaling a drastic loss of oxygen to the brain, potentially starving it to death. One team battles to stabilize Brenda, while another works on Rhiannon to prep her for surgery, her left leg already gone and remaining tissue at high risk of infection. But the team is worried about her right leg, badly mangled, 
She could lose that one too. And there's good reason why. They can't detect any blood flow to the leg. And obviously it's pretty important for her to keep that extremity because she's already lost one leg. So we were looking for a pulse and, um, and hoping that she had enough blood supply that that leg would survive. It really makes you think about things like, you know, you get a flat on the side of the road, what do you do? Do you get out? Penetrating. Gannon's pain may be excruciating. Can be a life may be excruciating, but she's worried about her friend. Is Grant okay? I don't know, sweetie. I'll tell you as soon as we find something out. But Brenda is not okay. What's going on? Her own pressures are high. I'm just gonna have another list to make sure we're not down one long way She can't breathe on her own. She's on a respirator, and her airway is still not easily taking oxygen into her body and brain. When someone's airway pressure is high, in this scenario, the thing that we are most concerned about is whether or not they've got a pneumothorax or a punctured lung, and uh, that can be a life-threatening injury. So it's one of the sort of triggers for us to make sure that that's not the situation. Finally, Brenda's bleeding is under control. Tourniquets and medication have stabilized her enough for Dr. Brenneman to make his next move. CT or or. Both women need surgery fast. But for Brenda, that won't be easy. Her leg is at near certain risk of amputation. But that's not what concerns this team. A CT is ordered to rule out brain damage. Rhiannon is about to be prepped for OR, often a time when parents are allowed a brief visit, but not for this young woman. Bring them in. No, he can't bring them in. Can't bring them in. Dr. Brenneman has to prepare them first before he can let them see their daughter in this. Upside and T-boned Ryan at teenage deaths. And young Ryan is hovering dangerously close to being in the 10% that don't make it. This is an 18-year-old male driver, seatbelted, MBC, uh, highway speed. Car is uh, found on its side, cut into a rock cut, totally demolished. A teen driver ran a stop sign and T-boned Ryan at an intersection as he was driving home from hockey practice. It's the worst news any mother could get. Then I got the news. It's a month since Brenda's been struggling on her own in a wheelchair after a devastating car crash that cost her her right leg. Today, that may all change. Kind of nervous this morning. Excited and scared and everything all in one. It's still kind of iffy. Today, I guess we'll really find out if I have enough um, on the inside to sustain it and keep it on. And I'm not allowed to take it home, right? I'm not allowed to take it home this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> this weekend. <laughs> I'll just go for a long walk. I told you that, yeah. So, as you know, it's going to be a little bit funny feeling at first. It's weird saying two kids. No, I'm okay. I had to get used to just seeing one, and now it's neat seeing two. Anything uncomfortable? No. Once I get this mastered, I'll be training with Angela on how to use high heels. Okay. This is the ultimate goal. Yeah, high heels and driving. You want to try taking a step or two you can. Take a step forward. Now let that knee bend. There you go. Whoa. Yep. It's transfer. Extend your, your left knee. There you go. Okay. 
nice and tall. Up nice and tall. <sighs> it's amazing. I'm proud of the work that I've done because I've worked really hard. And today was just the payoff because I actually finally got to stand on two feet and it was really, really good. I'm really happy. And I know it's a lot more work ahead of me, but I'm ready to do it and I'm ready to fight for it because I want it. There, there we go. That was a good one. That was a good one. It just looks nice to look down and see two shoes. Giving it back, say goodbye. No, I want to take it home. I know you do. Three months after losing her left leg, it's now Rhiannon's turn to realize her dream of walking again. Before the accident, when I would see somebody in a wheelchair, I'm like, man, you know, it kind of sucks that they've, they're, they've, they're put in that position. Innocent of a young child. So. It could easily be any one of us, you know, in a wheelchair tomorrow. It just makes you think twice about what you do, what your actions. It makes you want to listen to that voice that they tell you, because it is true, you always get that. Yeah, I've never really thought about, you know, dying or death, but coming here, you, know, you never know what can happen. 